Hello everybody, my name's Mon PJC and welcome to this tutorial video showing you how to make little models just like the guy behind me on little guys behind me on the screen. If you want to be able to make guys just like this, then this is the right video for you. Hang tight, it might get technical, but I'm going to guide you through every step of the way. So let's have some fun and get started straight away. So before we get started on the main tools that you will need within this uh, tutorial, uh, there are some prerequisites that you're going to need before you start actually building any of this. The prerequisites are, is that you're going to need a Minecraft client, which is based on fabric, uh, not the standard vanilla one that you normally get. You can get that by going to fabricmc.net and following their procedures on here for downloading the fabric uh, tool, which is located just here. You can download and install your installation of that. The next tool that you'll also need as well is the fabric API. This allows fabric to have other plugins into the client side. These are technically mods, but they're all quite safe. I can guarantee you can go to these, I've been using them for years. This can be found on CrossForge and it's the Fabric API. Again, I'll put a link down the bottom. And then the last thing that you'll need to do is to have World Edit. World Edit is going to be important because what you'll be doing is creating schematics in your world of your model and then using those schematics to transport them and convert them into the shapes that you see in the world. This tutorial is not going to cover those three areas. There are lots of them out in the world that you can go and find on the internet. As you can see here on the World Edit page, they've even got some basics on how to use the tools, etc. So go away and do that first. And now let's get on to the main part of the tutorial. Okay, so the first place we're going to start is by downloading some tools that will actually help you get to the models that we want to do. And I've got these pages already opened up here. And the first place you want to go to is GitHub and I'll put this link in the links down below in the description and you'll be going to the Minecraft schematic to 3D model page which has been done by Mspace Dev who many of you will probably know as someone who's done loads of stuff to do with vanilla tweaks. So the first thing that we're actually going to download here is this color palette tool here. So all we need to do is click on this and we'll go straight off to another page which will slowly load, hopefully a little bit quicker for you guys than for me. There we go. Don't worry about what you see on the screen here. Just go over here to the top right hand corner and click on the download button. This will then open up a blank page in your browser. And down here, if you're using Chrome like me, you'll see this color palette RP zip file has been downloaded. We can then go back to the main page here. The second thing that we want to download is the modeling tool itself. And this can be down, found down here. It's the first item under the assets. Again, just click on the link. And this time the, mod, the zip file will just download straight away for you without any worries whatsoever. What we now need to do is to copy these into our Minecraft world. So we can do that nice and simply by opening up our Minecraft our world of Minecraft. Here's one I've got loaded already earlier. And what we're going to do is be putting the color palette tool into our resource pack. Now, the easiest way to do this is as follows. Click on options and go to your resource pack button here. And you'll get a list of the resource packs that are available and the ones you currently have installed. Click on open resource pack folder. This will open up your browser to show you here. I'm going to pop back over here to where we downloaded the color palette. I'm going to go show in folder here for me. And there is my downloaded file, which I'm just going to right click, copy, close that window, go back to the resource pack folder and just paste it in here like so. There we go. That's that all done. Now, if we actually look in our Minecraft window, let's click done, resource packs, go back in here, and there it is. Color palette RP pack is there available. And this is the same pack, as I said, was used by the Let's Play Minecraft together team on the Exuma Void website. So we just click on the little arrow here to add this in. 
your Minecraft world will reload as such. And there you are, ready to go. So now we are ready to make our own Minecraft world and actually build our model in it. However, to make things a little bit easier for you, what I've done is I've already created a, a template world where you can make your Minecraft uh, little model or shape or whatever it is that you want to do. We do that as follows. So in the descriptions down below, yet again, I have given you a link to a down world download, which I am just copying and pasting in here like so. This will pop you over to Dropbox. And again, you don't have to worry about any of this sort of stuff. You can just do a straight download. You do the download by clicking on this little button over here. And you do want to do, you want to do a direct download. Which once again, we'll do this download over here, as you can see. And we can show this in the folder where it has downloaded it. It should appear on my screen here. Yep, so what I have here is this uh, MC schematic to 3D model zip file. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this again in the same way we did before and go back to our Minecraft here. And this time I'm going to go into the resource pack like so and open up our folder. And this is just an easier way to find where to save this world. So we're in the resource packs folder. You can click back here to the dot Minecraft world. And then you'll see this folder here called saves. If you double click in there, you'll find this is where I've already got some worlds already created, which I've been using to help create this tutorial. And all you need to do is now right click and paste in here your downloaded MC schematic to 3D model world. And we are just going to do a extract here. And a few seconds later, we get this folder here. And if you look inside there, you can see there is all the world data. So we can close this folder, click done here, click done, and go into our single player. And as you can see at the top here, we have MC schematic to 3D model world. And you can see it's got like a gray background square with some little pretty colors. And we can now go into this world here. And I can make this full screen for you. And there you are. There we are in our test world or our little template world. And as you can see over here, we have the, the color palette installed correctly because we've got all these pretty colors um, that are, are different blocks. And this test area that you can, or this area where you can build your model within. This area has to be 16 by 16 by 16. So it's everything inside the green emerald blocks and everything underneath that green emerald block there. So if we're up a little bit higher, you just need to be up from over there. I've also got this arrow, which is important because this is the way you need to be looking at your model in the world. And that's because we have a north, south, east, west in the game. And of course, what we need to be doing is looking in this direction at our model when we create it. So that's the next thing to do. I'm now going to get really busy and make a model. So the next part of the tutorial is to be able to actually copy our model into a schematic using World Edit. And to do this, as I said before, it has to be an exactly 16 by 16 by 16 model that you're actually converting. And the emerald blocks here denote the outside edges of that. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm using a redstone block here. You can use anything you want. I'm going to place that there. And then with the wooden axe, I'm going to left click on this first block. And you will see it says first position set. And then destroy that block. And go over here and place this one underneath the emerald block. And this time we're going to right click on the redstone block. And you will see it say second position now set. You've now got the area of 16 by 16 stored in the locations for well done it. Now to type in a couple of commands. The first one is double backslash copy. 
that will have now copied the entire area and you'll see it have copied 4096 blocks if it doesn't say 4096 blocks go back and reselect the area again because you haven't got the right number of blocks it should be exactly 4096 the next thing we're going to do is we're going to save this if i can actually spell it correctly so s-e-h-e-m for scheme and we're going to put save and now you can type the name of your model now i found there was a, a little bit of a quirk when i was doing this so i am going to tell you to do it exactly the same way as i've actually done it here so that it's repetitive for you as well save your file name as model underscore four or any other number so it could be five six seven eight nine ten whatever you want but store it as model underscore and then the number and then scheme on the end like that hit return and it will now tell you that model's now been saved and that's all we need to do here what you can do if you want to is you can save this uh, world as a different copy and you can keep loads of different ones of these saved up so you've got all of them to come back to and i'd actually recommend that because actually rebuilding that again could be quite difficult right so now we're going to hop back over to our desktop for the next step so i'm back here on our desktop and i'm in our downloads folder where we downloaded all those zip files before now the file that we downloaded with the tool that actually does the conversion, this is the next one that we're gonna want. We're gonna to wanna to set this up and install it in the right place. So it's the Minecraft schematic to 3D model zip file and you can see it's got all dots in between it there. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm gonna take this over to my Minecraft world because I find it much easier to find everything located off of my dot Minecraft world. So let's drop this file in here and then we're going to do a extract here what this will do is now install all of the files down the bottom here that we need to actually run this tool um, this is the model tool itself this executable here we don't need to do that just yet though what we do want to do is go and have a look in this example schematics folder which has just been created and you'll see in here that there are already four schematics being created for you. These are the examples that have been created by Mspace Dev. You can go and have a look on his, on his GitHub website and his ex explanation around these sorts of things. But one of these is the color palette that you actually saw at the beginning. What we want to do now is to modify our schematic to you for use in that folder. Now, the schematics that you're world edit saved will be in this config folder so under dot minecraft go into config world edit schematics and there is our file there and you can see why i saved it as number four because there's already some that exist so i'm just going to copy this go back and in this example folder i'm going to paste our schematic in there like so the next thing we need to do is to uh, create the uh, the model and modify it for use in our tool. So the next step for us here is to actually turn these models into something that Minecraft can actually read. And we do that using the tool that's being supplied by Mspace Dev. And what we do is we just double click on this execute file here and a few seconds later the program will open on my desktop things always go much slower when you're recording there we go it's popped up on the screen at last now the first thing i recommend you do is you want to include this template stick.json file i will explain what that means later and you'll get to see what we need to do is select the folder where our schematics are saved so we click on select schematics folder window pops up and we are going to select that example schematics folder which where we've already got some saved already just do select folder and that little sound will tell us that we have successfully converted uh, five models in total the four that were supplied by mspace dev plus our new one here i get an okay 
and it's now going to open this folder up showing us where our models are so I can get rid of all these other windows in the background so under this example uh, folder now we now have so if I go back one this is where our schematics are we now have this output folder this output folder is effectively your new data pack that you're going to be using but before you use it we have to tweak our JSON file which explains how our model is being created because if we go down through these uh, different folders and go into the model in here there you will see this complex JSON file which has got loads of details within it on how the file is put together and where all the different things are and we're not worried about that what we're interested in is getting the model right in the first place so to import this this will look great however it's going to have too many surfaces and could cause some lag if you have lots of these things in your game and also when you place this item on an item frame it's going to be 90 degrees out that's because when you place an item on an item frame it tends to rotate 90 degrees and you've not visually noticed it but it represents as if it's in the upright position we're going to be having our item frames typically laying down on a surface with our model sitting on top of it so we want to rotate our model by 90 degrees so it's sitting upright for us and we do that using a tool called block bench which is a free uh, 3d editor which allows you to modify your tool and also to check your tool actually looks right before you actually go any further you can download this tool if you want to however I already have it installed on my computer because I use it regularly so I'm going to go to open model and where we need to go to is our Minecraft folder there we go after a little bit of navigation through my filing system we've actually found our models in that folder where we were so what we're going to do is we're going to modify our new model model number four and we're going to click open and a few seconds later here is our little mon pjc model as you can see you can just hold the left button down you can rotate round. there are no holes anywhere so there are no weird blocks missing so it definitely looks like it's all being put together okay so the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to need a couple of little add-on tools to this just to help us and the first one of those those are going to be to optimize this model so that it looks a bit so it's a, a bit easier to sort of use in Minecraft because at the moment if you move your mouse over this you can see this it's full of lots of different blocks and surfaces and we need to simplify that the way to actually do that is to go to the uh, the plugins menu and down here on the plugins menu under files you'll open up these uh, plugins that you can add to this tool now if this is the first time you've used this you'll go down the available plugins and you can scroll down all of these but I've already got it installed and the one you're looking for is optimize hide concealed faces for better performance that's because this is made of lots of blocks there's going to be holes on the inside interior surfaces and what we want to do is to simplify the model so that we only have the external surfaces so that's already installed so you go ahead and do that and then all we then have to do is under filter click optimize press confirm and then you'll see there was a little pop-up that said that I think it was about 1700 faces had been removed from this so all the internal surfaces are now hidden and we can only see the external surfaces of our model now which is great because it's perfect for what we want the last thing to do is to rotate the model like I said we did before we can do that under transform rotate and you want to rotate the top one the plus 90 degrees I'll just do that again because it oh, actually helps if I select the model first doesn't it it's always something that goes wrong select all there we go transform rotate there we go he's now laying on his back 
So Little Mon PJC is now laying on his back. The model is now the correct way round. You'll see his, um, well, his bottom is now facing north so that when we now place him in an item stand, he'll be facing this way because the item stand, the item frame will be positioned here in the model on the north face so that when we look at him, he'll now be sitting in the upright position. You can now do save. Where's the save gone? Uh, no, export. So we export that back or save the model back to where we were. There we go. So that's file, save model. There we go. And that's now saved your file back into that folder we had. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you there. So we can see we now got today's date stamp, which is a little bit newer than these ones, which were converted a couple of minutes ago. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and talk about that stick. Do you remember? So we're in here. Now each of these is a model that can be referred to uh, that we're gonna put on. Now you're probably wondering how on earth did we get this brand new item onto something in an item frame? Well, we do that by using the stick. So under Minecraft here, we have models, item, and we have this stick JSON file. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this for editing, which is opened up on my screen over here. What this file does is it's as part of the data pack, uh, Mojang invented it so that you could have different versions of the same block. So if you've used anything where different textures are displayed or blocks are I've got different models depending on how they're being used this is how it's actually done because in here what we're doing is we're taking the normal wooden stick that's two planks that converted into a stick and we're going to override it by placing these extra models in and we're going to refer to these JSON files that we've just created which contain the model data so for us we're going to add in our fourth block. So we just put a little comma on the end here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire line like that and paste it underneath. And then when it says they're free, we'll change that to four. And the same there, we're going to change that to a four as well. That way, when we ask for the custom model number four will get our model that appears. Now, what I'm also going to do, which is entirely up to you, is because the stick disappears in the game. Now, if you still want to keep the stick, the stick by default has model zero. So I'm actually going to delete this top line, which allows you to keep the normal stick. Because uh, otherwise you're making things, you go to make like a pickaxe and you find you're putting two little models in the bottom of your pickaxe. So I delete number zero so that the stick still works. And we just put save on there. That file's done. We are now done. We are now ready after all of that to turn this model into our data pack. How do we do that? Okay, so come to this level here in the schematics model folder where we've got asset and pack. And we click on both these two files, right click, and then do uh, send to compressed file, like so. Do you know what? I'm just going to leave it name as pack, like that. This is now your data pack that you can now use in the game to display your model. So we can take a copy of that. Well, what I do is before I do that, let's open up our Minecraft again. and go back into our resource pack folder. Because what we're gonna do is gonna take the color pack out. Those colors still exist within that pack. We're gonna open this folder. There it is there. So let's grab our pack, copy that, and paste it into this folder here like so. Drop them off the screen. If I just click done, and go back in it will refresh there we go we can now add pack 
Done. There we go. Like so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new one. I'm not going to use any ones I've got already. Just to demonstrate how we use this. So let's create a new world. Uh, it's going to be creative because we need to be able to type commands in to actually do this. Um, is there anything else I want to do? No, nothing to do. We want to make sure we've got cheats turned on. Let's create this world. We're going to create just a random world. Take a few seconds to load up. And here we are. We're in this uh, nice, lush, random world. I'm currently in creative mode, but that doesn't matter. And this looks like a nice setting. Let's pick a point here like this. Okay. So what we now need to do is to use the resource pack to bring in our model into the world. Now, the first thing I can do is just talk about the stick. Our stick still looks like a normal stick. Yeah, doesn't look any different from normal. There we go. Just got an award for that. Um, I'm also going to get an item frame. There we go. And the normal process is put your item frame down and you can wallop your stick in there like that. Now, what we're going to do is put an item frame here and our model in it. Now, can you see how I mean about the, the rotation of the object is now facing a different way? See, this is now facing forwards, whereas this is now facing upwards. So we need to be able to get that out of there. Now, the way you bring your model in is by using a command and you want to be standing on the block that you're going to use. Now, it can take a little bit of experimentation to do this. I'm just gonna open my file here, which is already pre-written out the, in my guide, the block of text that I need to paste in. Which I've now just completely confused by clicking the wrong button. Okay, so I've copied the text, which you'll find down in the bottom of the description of this video. So we press T and I'm gonna paste this in. Now I'm just gonna read this out so you understand what each bit of the, the instruction does. This is going to summon an item frame where we're standing. It's going to give it the invulnerable uh, tag and invisible. Now in the version of Minecraft I'm using right now, those won't do anything because you can't have invisible ones in this older version of Minecraft. I'm going to show you how to use the newest one in a second. It's going to be a fixed location. It's going to be a stick. So it's definitely a stick. There's only going to be one of them. Now, custom model data. That was the extra tag we were modifying before. Four. So that's the item number. That's our model number four. The next pieces of information could be really useful for you. We've got facing, that's the direction the model is going to be facing in the item frame, and also the item's rotation. So if I hit enter now, there we go. In comes our little Mon PJC. Isn't that cute? Yeah, look at that. If I knew I could walk in Minecraft and actually demonstrate at the same time, there we go. Look at that, it's almost, that's almost a screenshot there, isn't it? So we can now bring in our little characters like that, however we want to. So let's give you a demonstration of what some of the other settings do. Now we were facing that way. Now it does not matter which way you're facing when you type these commands, because the rotation is always in the direction that the world is facing for north. So if we just have a look, which way is north? I imagine that's east. Where is, where's north? That's south. So north is that way. So because we've obviously put some rotation data in already, it's uh, changed the orientation. So let's just experiment with this. Let's give you some examples. So if I put rotation zero, 
here. There we go. See, he's now facing north. If I put rotation one, our character now sits at 45 degrees. So you can now bring in as many of these as you want. And the, the strange thing is, they actually pop off as well if you clump them like that. Uh, if I go into survival mode, game mode, survival, there we go. I can actually pop him off. Nope, he's invisible. I can actually rotate him in survival, which is quite useful if I wanted to. So you can do these little tweaks and you can see these are invulnerable, but they're not invisible. There we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to show you how to bring this into the latest version of Minecraft 1.16 and above. Okay, so the last step of this tutorial is to show you how to get your data pack updated so we can use it in 1.116 and above. And it's really, really simple. It's basically because in Minecraft we have uh, this pack file and when you open this pack file uh, let's edit this with notepad and just drag it over here onto the screen you will see that it has a version number here version number five and this is for previous versions of Minecraft now if I go into my options and resource pack this is 1.16 You'll see many of these data packs are in red and they come up and say that they're incompatible. It's a warning, to be honest. It's telling you that there are things in this data pack that may not be compatible with your version of the game. They might not load correctly. And what we have to do is just to modify this really simply by deleting that five and changing it to a six. Simple as that. Save that file and get rid of that off the screen. Yeah. We've now updated this pack so that it can be used in 1.16. All of the data that's in here is completely compatible with 1.16. You'll have to check to see whether this is still compatible with different versions in the future. But for now, this all does work. So this time, we're just going to repack this back up again. So we're going to send it to a compressed file. It's going to give it a different main. And this time, I'm going to call it on PJC's model like that and we're going to copy this and I'm going to paste it into the resource folder resource pack folder where I keep all my bits from my normal gameplay and then go back to here and if I scroll down the bottom you will see I've now got MonPJC's model and you can see that it's not going red or saying incompatible. And I can now move this over and add it to the list of other resource packs that I'm using. That model will now be loaded into our game to be used and we can import it and use it just as before. There we go, so that's all done. So let's go into a single player world and have a look at how these now look. So here I am in my new 1.16.3 world and above, and I'm ready to import my new models. The data pack's in place, um, the resource pack's all loaded up, and we are now ready to paste the same command in that we did before. Again, this is a creative world. So I've got these three blocks in place here, and we're gonna give these a go and see what happens. Just experiment with the whole idea. So let's type in our command and see what we get. And there we go. He's now facing the wrong way. And you can now see that I can't rotate him anymore. Like we did before. I can, however, destroy him. So he's rotated facing the wrong way. So let's have a look at rotating this again. He's got rotation of two, which is pointing to our right. So three, four, let's do a rotation of four, taking around another 90 degrees. Oh, and I was standing in the wrong block. That's not helpful. Go away. Let's get him back again. Right, 
That was good. I just need to be standing on the block I want him on. There we go. Uh, four. There we go. He's facing that way. Let's do this one. Let's do this one with five. Let's make sure I'm standing on the block. And he will point at 45 degrees into the middle there like that. And then this one we want around another 45 degrees. Make sure we're standing on the block. Come over, change that to a six. There we go. There are our fantastic little models here now in Minecraft world. Isn't that great? I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. It's been really good fun to make. Um, these models are not massively uh, complex. You could make them as interesting or as fun or as exciting as you want them to be. Um, just build whatever you want. As long as it fits within that 16 by 16 area, doesn't really matter. My name is MonPJC. And if you've enjoyed watching this video, I'd love it if you hit the like button or the subscribe button down below. Uh, if you're interested, I have a Discord channel where you can pop over and come and have a chat and join our community. And we can talk about the stuff that we do on our live server. Because yes, I go live on Twitch regularly. Um, I say regularly, about once or twice a week, I go on there. And you can see the link in the description down below and on the screen now if you're looking carefully. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Have a lovely day and thank you. Goodbye.